Okay, so what you guys see on my screen right now is Eclipse. So obviously this is our first junior coding league lesson. So do uh, do you guys all have clips? Um, for anyone just joining, um, basically all we're doing right now is I just wanna make sure that you guys have some way of following along with our first lesson. Um, so what you need is something called um, an IDE. So in the chat, can you guys just um, say yes or no based on whether or not you have some sort of IDE? If you don't know what it is, just write no. But okay, so there's one yes. It's another one. Okay, so we have three yeses and then one more. So just say yes or no if you have an idea or not. Um, Andrew, do you have an ID? Okay, no. Okay, so I'll quickly go through how to download it. So let me reshare my screen. I'll share the link. Okay, so all you need to do is go to Google and type in um, Eclipse IDE. So if you just go to Google, type in Eclipse IDE, then you can click on this. And then all you have to do is click this button here, this download button. And then whatever button comes here, you just click download. And then you should be able to download it and get it set up on your computer. So that's for the future. But for now, since um, we want to get started as quickly as possible, you can go to this website link, repl.it. Um, and then you can scroll to the bottom here. Um, and then right here, they have um, a bunch of languages that you can click on. So here, all you have to do is select Java from these options. So right here is Java. Um, and then here you can start coding and click run to run your code. So as you can see, it prints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send this link in the chat. So that way um, you guys have access to the language. So if you don't have an IDE, then you can just click this link and, and follow along. Or if you do, you can just open it up and get started um, with us. So with that being said, um, let me reshare my screen to the Eclipse IDE. Um, and let's get started. So if you have Eclipse, so if you're using the website, then you don't need to do anything right now. But if you have Eclipse, then what you do is you do file, you click new. And what we're going to do is create a new Java project. So you click on Java project. And you, at first, this can be a bit overwhelming. But the only thing we're worried about is right here, um, our project name. So we're right now, we're just going to call it Junior Coding Coding League. So we finish. And inside of this project, so and then if you get this pop-up message, you can just click Don't Create. We don't need that for now. So inside of this project folder, we're going we're gonna to put in all of our code that we're going to be developing throughout our lessons. So to start off, you just double click on your project folder. Um, oh, and by the way, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat. Um, either I or, or Anish will answer them. So, but for now, um, click on your, double click on your project, then click on source um, right here, this folder SRC. Click file, new, um, and click class. So again, the only thing we're worried about here is right here, this bar name, and let's just call it basics. And then you click finish and you're all good to go. So if you're using the online IDE, like the, the website that I put in the chat, then um, you're all caught up with us already. And if not, then um, just follow those steps and you guys will be here. So any questions from anyone about anything so far or are you guys good? If you have any questions, just type in chat. Um, would it be any different if I use IntelliJ? Yeah, any um, ID should be fine. Yeah, you should be fine. Yeah. Should be okay, but before we move on, does anyone just have like, can you guys answer yes or no in the chat if you have like prior Java experience? Okay, so we have, so we have some people with prior 
Okay, so we have a lot of people with prior Java. Okay, so we have, so we have, so we'll, I think we'll, we'll still go, we'll still go over this like really quickly just because I think like, yeah, if you know it already, I think like, you can just follow along and, yeah. But. So basically, like, there's like the main principle of Java, like, if somebody asks you, like, what's the main feature of Java? It's something called object oriented programming. And this is something that we're going to explain, uh, ex explore all throughout this course. And, you know, I'm not going to give you the definition right away because it's a bit hard to grasp at first, but as we do more examples and as we learn more about Java, it'll become clearer and clearer what exactly object oriented programming is. So the first thing that's relevant to object oriented programming is something called classes. So you see right here that we have a public class basics, right? Or if you're on the, um, uh, website, then you'll see class main, right? So either way, we're using this keyword here called class. And classes are where most of our code goes in Java. Um, actually, almost all of our code goes into classes in Java. And classes, um, you can put in two types of things. The first is data. And the second is uh, functions, which change data. So for now, let's start off with exploring data. So um, the, the, the key way that data is stored in Java is through something called a variable. So Anish, do you want to explain what exactly like a variable is? Okay, sure. Um, should we just go over like, uh, like printing before that? Or I think like might be better to... I mean, I think we can go through both at once, right? Okay, so just, just before we do that, does, every, does everyone know what a variable is? Um, you can answer yes or no. Okay, so we have some people that do. So um, does anyone want to volunteer and like give us an explanation? You can just type it into the you, chat. You can unmute your mic if you want. Okay, okay so um, I guess we don't like, have any, any volunteers. So basically like a variable is like a, we are, we can, you can call them variables or attributes, but like, they're basically just like, it, basically it's just like a symbol that's like, it's, it's like a placeholder that's like holding like some arbitrary, like uh, some arbitrary like data. And basically, in, oh, okay, so we have some answers in the chat, somebody that holds a value or something. Yeah, that's pretty much it. A data structure that holds value. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that, that's pretty accurate. Um, so uh, do you want to give one example of a, of a variable? So like, so like we're gonna we're gonna show you guys how to initialize a variable really quickly. Um, do you want to like give them an example? Yeah. And then we'll run so, down. Right. Yeah. So, um, actually, yeah. So we had some answers in the chat. You know, like a variable is like something that stores something. I I like to think about it through an analogy. Like um, the way I like to think of a variable is like think of it like a box. Um, right. So your box only is of a certain size. It can only be a certain width and a certain length. So a variable is just a box that can hold only one object at a time. And whenever you wanna you know, change the object in the box, you just take out the old object and put in a new object. And that's what a variable is. It's just a way to hold data in some sort of um, placeholder, right? Which we call a variable because it can change over time. Um, and we can access that data as we code. So in Java, there's a few different ways to create a variable. Um, and we call these data types. So first you have something called an int. So an int holds any type of number up to a certain limit. So we could um, put in, you know, negative 10 um, as our int, or we can put in something like 50 or 500 um, as our int. So um, regardless of, of what we put in our int though, it has to be a whole number. Um, so it can't be like, it can't have any decimal points. Um, but that brings me to the next type of data type, which is a float. So we have another float, so we call it like a fraction. And here we can use decimals, like 1.7, for example, um, as our float. And then this F just means that this is a type of float, basically. Um, next, we have strings. Strings are ways to hold words. So, you know, like a string sentence equals hello. And you'll notice that at the end of each of these lines, we have semicolons. So this is one of the key things in Java. At the end of each line, you should have a semicolon unless you have you know, these types of curly braces, but we'll get into more of that later.
So we have these variables and you're probably wondering, you know, what can we do with these variables? So in Java, there's something called the main method. So uh, for now, just copy these um, words. If you're, if you're on the, um, if you're on the online um, IDE, then you should have them already. But if not, then, um, then just type them out. Does anyone have any questions just before we move on? Um, I saw someone just joined right now. So um, do you got, um, do you have any questions if you just joined right now? Like, um, can you type in the ch chat whether or not you have an IDE? Or if you know what that is, just type in yes or no. So if you just joined, type in yes or no if you know what an IDE is. Chat's just in a, um, it's just a button you click at the bottom of the screen, by the way. Okay, well, I don't see anything, but if you do have any questions and you could just uh, message us as always. So for now, for now though, you should have just this in your file. And now we get to our first, you know, way to see the value of our variables. So what you're gonna type is system and then dot out dot print ln and in here you're just going to write the name of any of these variables so if, let's write num um, and now all we do is we what we can do is first off we're getting errors here because we put it outside of this method we can just put it inside here um, so you just copy paste it inside here you have the system dot out and then we run this. And as you can see right here, we print out 500. And then if we, you know, if we change this to fraction instead of num, and we run it, 1.7, we change this to sentence instead of fraction, run it, we get hello. So- We don't necessarily have to put a variable in the fun in the system that that's print then we could put any, we can pretty much put anything. Like even if we want, we can just put 500 itself. Um, and also keep in mind that whatever like, like execution, like, First, keep in mind, println is a method, and we're going to execute that in the in the main method. So basically, any execute any function that needs to be executed, we're going to put that in the main. Now, these variables you could put out outside of the main method if you wanted, but in this particular case, for like good programming habits, we're just going to put it in the main method. Yeah. So what you're going to notice is if you copy paste these variables outside of this um, function, you'll get an error. That's because of this static keyword right here. We'll go over what that means and, and why it's an error later. But just know for now that you should generally be creating your variables inside of functions. Um, so yeah, so as you said, we can print out anything. So if we, even if we write like 100 here, then we would print out 100. Or if we write, you know, like I, I am Archie and we run it, then we get that message in the chat. So I mean, sorry, in the console. This is this area where everything's being outputted. It's called the count console. Um, so that goes over printing. So now let's talk about some of the properties of each of these variables. So this, can anyone tell me, um, since some of you guys do have prior job experience, can, some, can someone tell me in chat, let's say I wanted to increase the va value of num by 10. How would I do that? Um, you can text in chat if you have any ideas. If you just want to increase the value of num by 10. Yeah, num plus. Yeah, that's right. Um, so there's actually, there's two ways of writing this. So first is, as, as I said in the chat, num plus equals 10. But all this really means is num equals num plus 10. So just for the sake of like making it clear um, what exactly is going on, we're gonna write this one, but you know, you can always write num plus equals 10. So what, what this is, is this is a comment. It's a line of code that we won't execute. That's why we would put two slashes in front of it. 
but it's just something that we can put here to read first. So if anyone's reading over your code, you can write comments in it to help them understand what's going on. So num equals num plus 10. What this is gonna do is it takes the value stored in num. So it's gonna plug in whatever stored in num 500 and add 10 to it. So it becomes 510 and store it back equal to num. So num is equal to 500 plus 10. So if we were to print out the value of num here, we should get 510. And as you can see, that's what we get. That's our answer, 510. So obviously you can do the same thing for subtraction, right? Num equals num minus 10, we get 490. And then you could do the same thing for division, num equals num divided by 10, 50. And then same thing for multiplication, num equals num times 10, which is 500 times 10, 5,000. So numbers are pretty simple, right? Um, sorry, integers are, are pretty simple. All you need to do is you can use plus, minus, times, divide, and put in any number, and you'll get some sort of output. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to meet, unmute yourself if you do. Okay, yeah, thank you. But since nobody has any questions, um, I wanna see if you guys know what would happen if I do num equals num plus num. So I want everybody to text in chat. What do you think is gonna happen if I do num equals num plus num when I hit run? Um, even if even if your answer is incorrect, it doesn't really matter. We just wanna see like if everyone's understanding what's going on. So if I put in num equals num plus num, what is the output going to be? Correct, it'll be a thousand. Yep, everyone's saying a thousand, cool. So yeah, so all that's happening is we plug in 500 here, 500 here, you add them a thousand, you store them back, and then we print out a thousand. So when we run, you see we get a thousand. Cool, so those are the basics of numbers. The same stuff applies pretty much to floats. Um, and then we have our strings. Now, strings are different. Um, if you see here, the string keyword is capitalized, but the other two are not. So what that means is that there is a class in Java called string, right? We don't create it. So we created a basics class here, but the creators of Java created a class called string that we can use in our programs. So what that means is that we can take this variable and use Java's built-in operations, which are called functions, to change it. So let me give you an example, because obviously that sounds a bit overwhelming when you first hear it. So instead of doing print num, we could do sentence, and then we do dot, and you'll see we get a bunch of options here. So let's just go with the very first function option, which is called char at. So if I just hit enter, we get the option to put in an index. So let's put in index zero. Um, and when we run this, what you'll see is that we get the letter H, capital H. So to kind of break down what's going on here, the way that a string is stored in Java is that you have a bunch of characters and you have a bunch of numbers that are equal to those characters. So our current string is hello. So in Java's memory, this would be stored like H, E, L, L, O, and H corresponds to the number zero, E corresponds to the number one, L corresponds to number two, this one corresponds to three, this one corresponds to four. So when we do char at zero, it goes to zero and finds the character that's stored there, which is H, and it prints out our H. So Does if we know what char is before we, before we move on. I'll just give a brief like uh, overview. So char is another um, pr uh, is another type. So like string flow in in, but it, it doesn't. It, it corresponds to specific characters. So like, do you want to like show how to like initialize that really quickly? Yeah, I mean char is just one letter basically in this string. So char in this case, you just use single um, single quotes instead of double quotes, and it's just one letter. So yeah. and then we just call it something like char letter. So it's just one letter, and you know they're not used that much in Java. Um, they're just used to make up strings. 
But, you know, obviously that's a bit complicated. So I, I think it's easier to remember it this way, where you just have a bunch of numbers and they correspond to the position of the letter in the string. So if we, if we do zero, as I showed you, we get H. And then if we make this into one, then we go to one and it should print out right here, E. So when I run this, as you can see, it prints out E. So when I print, when I do four, what letters are gonna print out? Text and chat. So all of you, um, yep. Everyone, can everyone else text? Yep. Correct, yeah. So the first letter is correspond, uh, corresponds to the number zero. And the second one corresponds to one and the third one corresponds to two and so on and so forth. So yeah, so I see a bunch of answers that are O. So yeah, the answer is O. So when we run this, we print out O. So there's a bunch of different methods like that for um, strings. Um, Anish, you wanna run through some of those methods? Okay, so um, so for strings, uh, so let's start with, um, so what do you guys think? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's let's start with the. Uh, so first, let's do a um, sentence like system that out there print lint. So, um, what do you guys think? Uh, let's see. Um, sense for string methods. Uh, what do you guys think system? Uh, I'm sorry. Sentence dot uh, um, two string will do. I don't want to check that. Uh, no, it's not like. Um, Uh, does anyone else have a like have a guess? Uh, it will make us uh, not exactly. Uh, so um, two string is just another is just another um, way of printing it out. Yeah. So. So basically, like, if you, yeah. I mean, two strings aren't really extremely useful for strings, um, but it's just like one of these common methods that a lot of objects have. It's just a way of printing out data about the object. For for a string, it's just printing what the string is. So I mean, it's like whenever you like the interesting thing about Java is that a lot of times you don't see what's going on when we write system dot out dot sentence. What's actually happening is we're actually calling sentence dot two string. We just don't see that happening. So that's just something cool um, that you know that you don't that you wouldn't really know about Java if you were just looking at it. But yeah, but somebody mentioned length. So there is a dot length method. Um, so it's just dot length and then parentheses. And when you run this, it just prints out five, right? Because obviously we have five characters here. Um, and as you guys can see, since there's two print statements, we're still getting the letter O from before. If you wanna stop printing the letter O, then you can either come this line out or just delete it. Um, and as you can see, we get the length here. Um, so very much related to charat, there's another method called dot substring. Um, so substring uses the same numbers here, but instead of printing just one characters, it prints a bunch of characters. Um, and so what it does is it takes the starting number where you want to start at and the ending number where you want to end at. So for example, let's say we started with um, zero and we went to two. And if we run this, you see it prints out HE. So what it does is it prints the zeroth um, letter, which is H. Then it prints the letter that's corresponding to one, which is E. And then as soon as it gets to two, it stops. So it doesn't print this L here at two. It only prints the letters at zero and one. It stops as soon as it reaches two, which is why we only get H E. So now let's say we did one comma four. Can you guys put into the chat what you guys think would happen if we did if we ran this one comma four. Uh, no, it won't print one, two, three. Uh, you're on the right track. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, ELL, -L. I mean like, as it, it, it sort of will print um, one, two, three, as in it'll print the letters at one, two, three, but it won't print the numbers one, two, three. So it's gonna print ELL. -L. Um, and so when we run it, you see it prints ELL. -L. Um, and so again, since we put four here, it stops as soon as it hits four and it doesn't print this um, zero. 
I'm sorry, it doesn't print this letter O. So if we wanted to print the whole thing start to finish using this substring method, we just do zero comma five. And once we run that, we get the whole word. But if we were to do a lot of times what people end up doing is they make a mistake because they think that four is the final number. So I'll just write four. But the issue is when you do that, the last letter gets cut off. So always make sure when you do this substring, this last number is not included. Another um, way you can do it is you can also, you don't, you, sometimes you don't even need end index. As long as you have the beginning index and you want to print the entire, like from, from, the, from the beginning index to the end, you can just print end. Just yeah, print. yeah, yeah. So what Anish is talking about is if I just put the number two here, it would just go from two all the way to the end. So it would print, um, as you can see, it just prints LLO, just goes from two all the way to the end. Um, so Does there we have our sub Okay, so I think. All right, so there we have a couple um, methods. And the final one that I think is kind of important is compare to. And compare to is another one of these methods um, that is present in, all, in most objects in Java, but all you're doing is you can um, check whether something falls alphabetically before something else. So like, let me give you an example. So we have hello stored in sentence. And if we just said something like, um, I don't know, like if we just wrote like int and we did dot compare to, and we printed it, um, the, the number itself doesn't really matter for now, but what you should know is that this is positive. So this is positive seven. Um, and if we were to make this something like, um, like Jill and we ran it, then we would get negative. So what compare to does is it tells us whether one, one string comes alphabetically before another. So ant obviously comes alphabetically before hello because a comes first in the alphabet and then H, right, comes later. So because of that, when we run compare to and we print it out, we get a positive number. But Jill, right, J comes after H in the alphabet. And so because of that, when we run it, we get a negative number. And so for that reason, we just use compare to whenever we want to organize, um, you know, some sort of data alphabetically because we can compare two strings and figure out which one comes first um, alphabetically speaking. What do you guys think um, sentence are compared to instead of hello? Let's try like hello, like with the name. What do you think that will print? Well, what do you think that might print? And you can check the answer in the chat. So if instead of Jill or something, we had a hello, what do you guys think would happen? Yeah, a positive number. Um, could you be more specific? I, I, mean, I think that, that answers. Probably. Yeah, I think that'll do. Yeah, it's because yeah, so it would be positive because um, H the first two letters are the same, right? So wait, like just think about it like you're comparing two uh, words alphabetically. Um, so the first two letters are the same, but then the second letters A comes before E in the alphabet, obviously, right? So hello would be alphabetically before hello. So when we run this, we get a positive number because obviously hello comes before hello. So there we have our compare to. Uh, now let's get into one of the most important properties of a string. And that's something called um, concatenation. Um, so let's put, it, let's put this pretty simply, right? So up here we did num plus num. So here we use plus to add two numbers, but the plus um, sign can be used for many different things in Java. One of those is something called concatenation. So if we did system.out.println again, what we could do actually is sentence plus, and we can put a space plus, or, okay, so let's just put plus world, right, for now. So if we did sentence plus world, you see we're adding two strings. And at first that doesn't make sense, right? Because you should only be able to add numbers. But the way that the plus sign works um, in this case is that it combines the two strings into one. So when we print this out, what we'll get is hello world, as you can see here. Um, and the reason that this ability 
is useful is because we can combine it with variables. So um, before we jump into that, I want to give you guys like maybe like 10, um, like 15 seconds just to copy everything down if you haven't yet, because I'm getting some messages in the chat about people not being able to copy everything down. So I want to give you guys like 15, 30 seconds to copy everything down, and then we'll continue um, with like concatenation. Let us know if you have any questions also. Yeah. All right, so anybody need more time? You could just text me in the chat, but otherwise we'll move on. Um, okay, cool. So I, I don't see any Okay, so I think we should probably talk about like a more advanced concatenation. Before we, instead of printing it, let's try this. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Let's say if we did sentence plus equals num. No, I'm sorry. Uh, like the uh, very one. Oh no. Okay. And then we printed some just sentence. What do you get? What do you think will happen to that? So, yeah, so um, do you want to run it? Let's find out. Yeah, so. So, uh, yeah. It's I actually, hello. Should, yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah. Uh, because hello we put num plus num. Yeah, but you're right. You're on the right track. It's hello 500. It would have been hello 500. Yeah. So, and notice there's no space here because we didn't add any spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, it's all just like completely together. If we wanted a space, we would just do like this. And if we ran it, we'd have a space. And again, yeah, it's just a thousand because up here, we're changing it to a thousand. But yeah, you're on the right track. We know what you were going for. Um, okay, so let's try a different example. What if we did num plus equals sentence instead? What do you think num will be? So I think it probably already. Like, yeah, you can see right here. <laughs> it's it's going to give you an error, right? Because um, because you although you can add a number to a string, you cannot add a string to a number. You can't do it the opposite way. So, so it's not 1000 hello. So um, do you want to explain why we can't add um, sentences? Yeah, we, we, can't, we can't do 1000 hello because the number, when you use plus for a number, it's expecting it to be another number. But when you do plus for a string, it's expecting it to be anything. It can be another string, it can be another number, it can be a variable, it can be anything. And so for that reason, because remember, we could just write this as num equals num plus sentence. But the issue is when you do num plus sentence, this is not an int. So you cannot store it in an int variable. This is actually a string. So when you do something plus a string, it automatically gets converted into a new string. So that's why we can do something like this. It's like string um, s is equal to um, one plus two. And as you can see here, there's no error because when you do this, you automatically convert it into a string. So what this looks like is a new string that looks like that when you use that plus. And so that's the reason why we got an error when we try to switch it around because you can't, you can't store a string into a, an int. So, so what do you guys think would happen if we did, let's say, string s equals just two? So I think it probably already tells you, but. So does anyone know why like it won't, this would be an error? 
Um, you can unmute yourself if you want to answer. Yeah, so like basically we didn't convert anything to a string in uh, number two is an integer and then type and we cannot put that into a string into a string into a string variable. But on the contrary, like when any, when Archer did um quotations one plus two, the quotations one was a string and the two we were able to concatenate that and then we were able to we were able to take that into like a we were able to make that a string um, data value and we were able to put that into a variable. Does that make sense? If they, if, if you don't understand them, please be able to know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. So it's a, it's a fancy word, concatenation, but all it means is that you are adding something to a string and storing it um, or printing it out as a string. So those are the basics of concatenation of strings. Um, and again, one of the key things to remember we can do stuff like this with strings. We can use like methods like dot compare to and dot substring for strings. We can't do that for ints or for floats or for chars. We can only do it for strings because a string is a special type of data type because it's a class, not one of the you know inbuilt primitive data types. But I mean, we'll, we'll expand a bit more about that difference later. But for now, that's the main thing you need to know. Um, so I think that just about covers strings. Anish, you want to add anything else for strings or? Um, for strings, I think that's a good starting point. We'll, we'll, we'll be going into like um, the bigger parts with like, where we're going to create like our own, like um, let's say like our own classes and uh, like, can you run this? Uh, sure. Um, uh, uh, yeah. We this, we, it, would, it would just print. Uh, well, so this, this wouldn't even print this string since we're printing num, it would just print a thousand. But if we, if we did change this to S and we just run this, um, as you can see, just prints one and then space and then two because we have one space here and we have plus and then two and it just prints one, two. Um, Does that make sense? Uh, do you have any questions about that? Okay, so um, if nobody has any questions, I think we can. So I think that, that covers like a good foundation of strings for now. Um, I think we can go back to like, uh, should, we, should we go back into like, how that how that how the primitive types work for like um for like in order of like importance for um fractions and for like floats doubles ints. Okay, yeah, sure. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment these lines out as well. So let's go back to our floats ints and let me comment. Okay, so we don't need num equals num plus num anymore. Um, and let me comment out char as well and string. So now let's focus on int, float, and double. Um, um, for those of you that don't know what a double is, a double is just another um, way of storing decimals. If the only difference between a float and a double is that a double can hold more, um, you could you could just you can if a better way to like define would be this: a double is more accurate than like a float, at, or like a double is just more it holds like more um it can hold like a, a larger scope of values compared to a float. Yeah. It just said doubles can hold bigger numbers, um, but floats also take up less memory. So it just depends on, you know, what you're kind of building. And we also have something called like bytes. So byte. Yeah, but like that stuff is probably irrelevant. Yeah. But just to like show you all like the, the number um, var types of variables, these are the main ones in Java, at least. Yeah, the there's also like short and long, but you, you won't probably, like the, yeah. the most common one you'd probably be used, or you'll probably use for like integers, just n. You probably use int, and you'll probably use double. Um, you usually don't use the others, but you know just to show you what they are. And the the main difference between them is like as Nish describes, they're just more and less precise. So you know bytes can store the least amount of numbers, but they also take up the least amount of data. Doubles can store the most, but they also take up the most amount of data. So, um, but what we described for numbers is what we can use for any of these. So you can use the plus operation for any of them. So you can do like small equals small plus two. And if you run this, um, and if we were to... Um, so the reason why that doesn't work is because a byte only goes from uh, negative seven to seven. Oh wait, no, no, it doesn't, it goes from... Uh, yeah, no, I think this is a, this is a casting error, but 
that's that's actually a bit more advanced. We'll go into that later. But what you what essentially what you should know is that the plus and the minus and the times and all of that they work pretty much the same across all of these. Um, there are you know there are exceptions like what you just saw. There are sometimes errors, but we'll get into those more as we um, you know learn more about Java. But for now, like just know that these are like the key types of um, ways to store numbers. So you know, we do have two different notations. So let's do some um, questions here. So let's do system.out.println um, num. Um, this is what we use for multiplication times two. So, you know, when we do this, we get um, a thousand, right? So what if we did num divided by two, what would we get um, text in chat? If we just did num divided by two, we would get 250, yup. So when we run it, we get 250. So again, so that's just to you know show you once again that we can divide, but let's try something else for a second. So first we have, let's say we wanted to do num equals num times 2.5. What would happen now? I think you can see, but. Does anyone know why this is an error? Because if you think about it, um, 500 times 2.5, that's not a decimal, right? 500 times 2.5 is still, um, what, 700, um, 1250, right? So shouldn't that, shouldn't that not be an error if it's 1250? Um, so I don't, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty hard question, but the reason why is because this right here is a decimal, right? And this is not. So even though, right? So even, even though if we were to, you know, pull up a calculator and do like um, 500 times 2.5, even though that wouldn't necessarily give us um, a decimal, it would. So, okay. So five, you know, 500 times 2.5 equals 1250, right, on your calculator. But what it doesn't show you is that because there's a decimal here, it has to add a decimal to the final answer. So this is not just 1250, it's 1250.0. And because of this 0, 0.0, we have a decimal on our answer and we cannot store it in num because num is an int. And if you remember, ints can't be decimals. So the correct thing to do would be to create, you know, um, a new type of float or just to store it in, in, in an existing float or double. So if we just stored it in our double big fraction, then as you can see, there's no error. And then if we were to print big fraction, if we were to print it, as you can see right here, there is a decimal point, right? It's 1250.0, not just 1250. And so because of that, you can't multiply a decimal times an int even though it you uh, even though it appears that the answer is going to be a whole number um, because of that invisible decimal point that Java adds. Um, so there's that. Um, but let's say that you really didn't want to create a new type of um, or store in a different type of variable or create a new type of variable to store 1250 because 1250, you know, it's, it's very close to a number. So what do you do if you want to store it in numb? What do you uh, do? Can we try float? Uh, do you want to do that really quickly? What? Um, uh, someone asked, can we try float? Uh, do you want to like shoot it through your store into like fraction? Oh, okay. Let's go. Um, what you would have to do is write F here though, because F means it's a float because Java doesn't know what is a float and what is a double. So if you write F, it tells it that it's a type of float. So now if we did this and we printed out fraction, um, it's still 1250.0 as you can see. So yeah, so float or double should be the same thing basically. But let's say you wanted to be, let's say you didn't want to create a new variable and you wanted to just store it into num. Does anybody have any, this is a pretty advanced concept. So I'll be pretty impressed if you guys can get it, but does anybody have any idea as to what, what we do here to fix this issue? No, we're not going to set num equal to a double. Uh, Like if we just want to get rid of the point oh at the end here, just make it just even my num has to be an in else. It will remain in.
Yeah, so it doesn't look like anyone knows. So we do hear something called casting. So you put parentheses around this, put parentheses here, and you write int. So all this is doing is converting the decimal into an int. So it's just chopping off the decimal at the very end. And so when we run this and we print out num, as you can see, we get no errors and it prints out 1250 without the point zero. So this right here is something called casting. And all you're doing is like you're converting it from a certain type to a different type. So let's try something else. So what if instead of doing this, we did print double num. So we converted num to a double. What do you think would print out in the console? Text and chat. Um, if you don't know, then text, I don't know, but at least try and guess what you think will get printed out. No guesses? Come on, at least, at least, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple more minutes to think about it, but at least try and guess what you think will happen. We're, just think about it, we're converting from an int to a float, 500.0. So yeah, so when we run this, as you can see, 500.0, right? So we're just getting the 0, .0 at the end because we're converting from an int to a double, which is a decimal. So now let's try something a bit harder. So if we did int and we did 1.7, so obviously 1.7 is not an int, but what happens if we convert this to an int? What do you think will happen? Think about it before when we, when we converted, we chopped off everything after the decimal point. So when we do this here, right, if we run it, we chop off everything after the decimal point. So even if this was like 1.732, something like that, and we ran it, it would still give us one, right? Or if it was if it was 5.7 something, it would still just give us five. So remember, if you, if you ever cast to an int from a decimal, everything after the decimal point gets chopped off. And if you ever cast from an int to a decimal or a double or a float, you'll just get a 0 0.0 at the very end. Um, so that should cover casting. And I think there's just one key final concept that we should go over in today's class. And that is something called an if statement. So an if statement is just another thing that's built into Java that's made to help you build programs. So let's do like if, and you put parentheses, num, and we put the greater than sign. So if num is greater than 400, then we print, yay, right? So if we run this, when we run this, as you can see, it prints out yay. So let's go through each part of this if statement. Let's so I'll go over booleans first before we uh, go over the logical operators. Yeah, yeah. So Booleans are another type in Java and they're used in these if statements. So I wanted to show you what the if statement looks like um, before we jump into Boolean so you can understand what the point of a Boolean is, right? Because at first a Boolean seems kind of useless um, because all you can do is store true. Um, we give it a name like uh, value. So all you can do is store true or false. Um, and so it seems, it seems um, like, wh like, why would you ever use this? But the reason that Booleans exist in Java is because we need to use them in situations like this one. So not only can you store true or false, you can also store operations in here. So you can store like 100 greater than 10. And so if we print out, We print out value. Then what we will get is true. 
right? And then if we did less than, then what we get is false. So all that's happening here is that it's checking. Is 100 less than 10? It's not. So it return it stores false in Boolean. So, you know, we, you saw greater than, you saw less than. There's actually a couple others. So there's greater than or equal to, which is just looks like this. There's less than or equal to, which looks like that. Um, there's equal to, which looks like that. Um, so notice when we check is equal to, we use two equal to signs because our equal to, like just one equal to, is used when we create our variables. So if you want to check if two numbers are equal to each other, or if two objects or two, two of anything, two variables are equal to each other, then you use two equal to signs. And finally, not equal to, which is just exclamation mark equal to. So, you know, right here, if we do this, 100 is not equal to 10. So if we run it, we get true. And then if we try to check is 100 equal to 10 when we ran it, we get false. And we, it's the same concept for greater than or less than. And so the reason this is important is because we're using it right here in our if statement we're checking is number greater than 400. So what's really happening here is that we have like a Boolean, right? So is number greater than 400? It is, so we are doing true. And so this gets converted to true um, right here. And since it's true, then we go to the next line and we execute whatever is in here. However, if we did num is less than 400, this would be converted into false. And because this is false, we don't go to the next line. As you can see, that's why we have the yellow lines here because we can never reach this code. So, so as you can see, when I run this, we don't get the yay message anymore, right? We only get the false. Let me, let me actually comment this out. So when we run this, we get nothing because num is not less than 400. It's greater than 400. And so that's, and the whole thing where it's getting converted into true or false, we as a programmer don't do that. Um, your system or your IDE or, or the website, it does it automatically. So you don't have to worry about doing that. You just have to worry about putting this condition in here. So again, all you do for an if statement is you write if, you write parentheses, you write something that you want to check inside the parentheses, and then you do you write what you want to do if that is true. So... And then, and then the compiler does all the, all the other work. So it, it automatically checks if something is true or if it's false. And then based on that, executes the code underneath. Um, so yeah, Anish, anything else to add or? Um, yeah, so I guess we can quickly, we have some time left. So I think we can go over else's also. Yeah, so this is an if. And you also have an else. So an else, you just put it right underneath um, the if. You could do it like, like this, or you, I, I prefer to write it like this. And then you just write to do in the case where it's not true. Um, so we could write like boo. So what this else is doing is that it means that if we don't get to our code inside, inside the if, meaning that if this is false, then we do this. So in other words, this is just an easier way of writing if num less than 400. So instead of writing all this out, we could just write else. Um, and then if we run this, right, as you could see, we get yay. But if we change this to a less than sign, then since num is not less than 400, we skip over this, we go to the else, and it should print out boo. And as you can see, when we print it out here, we get boo. So we have um, about five minutes left. So I think this is a good point to start um, wrapping up instruction and start giving you guys a bit of homework that you guys can do to practice until our next lesson next weekend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a couple of... Um, statements and your homework will be to try and figure out what happens if we were to run code. So let me comment all of this out. So your homework is to take the statements I'm writing here. So the statements that are within these equal to signs and figure out what these things will output. So first, um, 
if I do int uh, num is equal to five and then do num plus equals five and then we run system dot out and ln num then what is our output? So what is the output? You guys can copy it down exactly like I'm writing it because that way you guys can see what the question is and you know what the code is. Um, so next question, we'll do you know, string s is equal to a laptop. So system dot out dot print ln s dot char at zero. Um, system dot out dot print ln s dot substring um, two comma four and system dot out s dot length. So again, what is the output? Um, and let's do another one. In um, b is equal to five is less than ten. System dot out dot print ln b, and then int num or number is equal to teen, and then if number greater than ten. I'm not, I'm not. Uh, I should say a number. I guess it... Oh yeah, number. Um, else, system dot out dot print ln. So. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So again, if you want to. Um, download this, you can just go to eclipse.org and then right here, click this orange button that says download um, and you should be able to download it. But also um, there's this website called repl.it. So you just go to repl.it uh, slash Java 10. Uh, it's, on the, it's still on the Eclipse sharing. Oh, we can't see it there. Oh, you can't see it. All right, wait, let me, let me, yeah, let me be sure. Oh, by the way, we'll send like all that stuff and like all like the exercises in, in email after class, just in case like. You yeah, but so, so all you need to do is you can just go to eclipse.org, click download um, in the top right and then click this button here. You should be able to download it and start working. Um, um, and once you download it, you'll get like a pop-up that helps you set everything up. Or you can just go to this website, which is repl.it slash languages slash java 10. I can send it in the chat so that way you guys can note it down. So repl.it slash languages slash java 10. So it's right there in the chat. You can use that as well if you don't want to um, or if you if you can't download Eclipse or if it isn't working for you, you can use this website as well and code online. Yeah, but we preferably ask that you would download an IDE because like, you can save all the work that we did in our class. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, but worst case scenario, if you really can't, you can create a uh, you can create an account on this website and save all your code online. But generally, we like it better if you could download it because that way it's easier to follow along because they're using the same stuff we are, and you know it's easier to save your work and all that. So, also make sure that you guys hit Control S to save your files on Eclipse to save everything that we've done so far. Um, that way that you know you guys don't lose any of the work when you close out of eclipse so if you hit Control s or if you're on mac command s to save your save your work um so again for this one we do what is the output so yeah so be sure to you know try to attempt these three um exercises here for homework we'll send them in an email as well but just try and write them down that way you guys have you know something that you guys can do um you know immediately once the lesson ends um, and we'll see you next time. So thanks for coming. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'll be sticking around um, for a few minutes. Uh, but like other than that, like classes, it's eight o'clock, so class is over. So you guys are free to um, log off. Um, we'll, we'll be here for like a few more minutes if you have any questions. Yeah.
So if you guys have no questions, you guys can leave. Um, thank you for coming. But if you do, then you guys can stay and you can unmute yourself, ask us questions, and we can answer them for you.